Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, it's snowing at Yellowstone. You can see areas on the ground where the heat has melted the snow and the runoff from the geysers. Uh, but here's some information for you you might find interesting. The magma plume that comes up and feeds Yellowstone comes up from the mantle of the earth and the evidence is in the trinium that was found when they were digging um, putting in the boreholes, the very deep wells, to monitor the earthquakes and other um, activity at Yellowstone. Here is an image of some of the notes. One for borehole 944, that is Grant. It says here, water sampled at 90 feet below land surface. Had trinium concentrations of 7.87 TU. Water sampled at four other depths were also... also Trinidad with a concentration of about 1 TU. Canyon Village, an area um, and borehole 206 Canyon Borehole. Trinium concentrations decrease at a depth of 8.8 .8, uh, to 20 Trinian units. That's a lot of Trinian. Didn't say exactly how deep it was. Samples from Yellowstone Lake. Uh, Trinian collected there at depths of 306 to 402 feet. Um, Trinian levels were 11.7 and 11.6 TU. Um, Panther Creek, borehole 945. Uh, samples were collected at 400 to 475 feet, but these samples were not analyzed because the field uh, parameters values were about the same as those for the samples from 455 feet and 310 feet. The trinium concentration was 8.1 TU and water samples from uh, 455 and 515 feet had concentrations of 0, 0.0 and 0 0.2 trinium. Now you know Panther is up there by the uh, Montana border. I've talked about that area um, near Mammoth Vault. Another thing you might find interesting, thinking that they've been monitoring these volcanoes forever. Well, they haven't. USGS installed the first, the very first, permanent seismographic uh, monitors in 1973. That was 47 years ago. And I have shown you, drawn in red lines, the uplift that is going on at Yellowstone. And then I put a black circle around it. This is the uplift of the ground of the surrounding area. And I found in another document a interview with Robert Smith, or Bob Smith, as you may know him, who works at the University of Utah. He says um, that, no, I do not, when asked a question about Yellowstone's uplift. Um, that's the other thing about Yellowstone. The caldera is a pimple on the overall deformation of the entire Yellowstone Plateau. The caldera itself is moving up and down, but the whole region up to 300 miles wide has been uplifted 500 meters. That's 1,640 feet. The Yellowstone Plateau goes well beyond the boundary of Yellowstone Park. It goes out for 200 kilometers or more. That's 120 miles. Now, I've talked about different cracks or dike intrusion. We know that we got one down here by West Thumb. That's one of the newer eruptions that created it. We got another one here in Yellowstone Lake. But Robert Smith, Bob Smith, talks about a dike intrusion, which goes along this red line that I drew out, and I've talked about before, where the uplift um, was 3 feet 4 inches between Mallard Lake, Old Faithful, and... Up over here at Hayden Valley, Bob Smith says there is a dike intrusion under the ground which is allowing magma to come close to the surface of um, this whole area. Now many of you will remember that east of the Sour Creek Research Dome, this is all drawn in yellow. This area of the ground has become very thin. Um, to the depth of the magma. And you will remember that this is the area where dead trees laying on the ground 
um, burned up from the heat of the ground and turned into uh, charcoal. Remember that? Bob Smith feels that this area will be the area of the next Yellowstone eruption. Um, he is hoping that it would be a small eruption, and being a small eruption, that means it would be about the size of Mount St. Helens or greater. Evidence of tritium in the uh, rocks when they dug out the uh, boreholes to put in the uh, monitors for Yellowstone should be all the evidence anyone would need that the magma is not pockets of melted um, magma. It's called magma when it's still under the ground. It's not pockets of melted rock on the surface of the earth, but in fact it's coming up from the mantle of the earth. Here on Wikipedia we have an image of the earth and the mantle of the earth, and that's above the core, the inner core of the earth. If and whenever Yellowstone decides to go off the first eruption, um, this smaller eruption that they're hoping would be um, about the size of what Mount St. Helens or greater. Now, no smaller than Mount St. Helens, but it could be greater. It could be a, another caldera, caldera forming eruption. The first eruption would definitely be a rhyolite explosion. The last of the type of magma that would come up would be basalt kind of like what they had there in Hawaii. But that would be at the end of the eruption of Yellowstone. There was quite a few earthquakes yesterday and more today that they have not reported. The most ridiculous was uh, magnitude 1.8 that they claimed was up there by Dillon, Montana. Between Stanley, Idaho, yeah, they've been rocking and rolling. And that's along the Snake River Plateau. I talked about that in the Sawtooth Mountains. Um, on this map here, there's been 94 earthquakes in the last week. Now, yesterday, let's zoom into the Yellowstone area, um, there was 24 earthquakes, most of them along um, Hayden Lake, um, Earthquake Lake, and in the Madison River area. As I stated, there's lots of activity going on at Yellowstone. Here we got... Um, Late last night, uh, Friday, um, this here is Maple Creek, and you can see this earthquake signature here, a little west thumb, and then down here at Madison. I'll pull it over so you can see this activity. And I'm going to come forward about four hours. Yeah, you can see the magma on the move, and I'll let me pull it over for you again. And go forward another four hours. And I'll pull it over for this other earthquake. These are not being reported. Now it could be Stanley, Idaho. It's got a P wave on it. And we'll pull it ahead another four hours. Yeah, lots of magma on the move. And I'll go ahead another four hours. And I'll pull it over. Here we got another one. It shows up here at Maple Creek and at Madison River. The one in the center is uh, uh, Little Thumb Creek, which is, let me show you on the map. All right, let's pull it out. We'll go down here. Right there. So I went ahead another four hours. Here we got. Today, the 14th, got another earthquake here. Let me extract that file for you. You see there's a small P wave on it. Oh, let me close that. Let me pull that one for you. And we'll come forward another four hours. And what it was showing when I pulled the files earlier. Yeah, lots of magma on the move. Look at that. Let me pull it over. Again, the one at the top. Oops. 
is Maple Creek, again, West Thumb, and Madison River. The most significant that showed up on the different charts was this one here at about 430. Right there. That's universal time. That would be the 3.7 that they had there along uh, the Snake River Plateau in Stanley, Idaho, which would be the Sawtooth Mountain Range there, uh, 429 and 17 seconds. 11 people did report feeling that earthquake, and on the felt map, this is the location, it was felt and reported as far as Cadwell and Boise, Idaho. And I'm not sure where that one's at. Let's see. Uh, Camas Prairie, Camas Creek. Now going back to this magnitude 1.8 that happened up there by Dillon, uh, Montana. Here we got Maple Creek. This here in the middle would be a borehole. Um, for the Madison River area, you can see the signature as it came in. And then this one would be uh, West Thumb, but the most significant would be Maple Creek. So we'll zoom out on the map and go up to that earthquake where it supposedly occurred, which is this one right here, right there. Okay, there's the location of the earthquake. This is the area of the lake. Then zooming in on USGS map. There's the earthquake, and down over here would be Maple Creek and Madison River. Yeah, a 1.8. I don't think so. No one reported feeling it. It was in a very remote area. Okay, we got a little courthouse here. Um, transportation Maintenance Department. Um, but I was looking around here for houses and areas that might have felt it. It is really remote. And you all know that if they can get away with downgrading these earthquakes, they do. Yeah, I was thinking I would love to be able to triangulate these earthquakes myself and um, see what I would actually get. But then there was another one. Let me see if I can get it up over here. All right, so let's go to these other earthquakes. We got one there at, what, 9.17 and 30 seconds. I don't see it being reported. We'll pull this file here. I could be just missing it. And then we got another one over. Um, let me pull this over so you can see it. Let's see. Be right down here. It's got a P wave on it. Right there. Yeah, not being reported. All right, here it shows November 13th, Friday at 9.36 Universal Time. And here you can see it's not being reported. No, these did not happen in Mina, Nevada. Those earthquakes do not show up on any of these monitors. All right, I want to show you another one they didn't report. Friday, November 13th. That was yesterday at 11.09. And we got it here on Maple Creek. It's also here on uh, Little West Thumb. And Madison River down here at the bottom. I'll pull it down for you. I'll close this. And yeah, lots of stuff was going on. 1109. Now we got 1114, 1130, 1155, um, and 1507. Yeah. So basically, they're just picking and choosing which earthquakes they want to, re you know, report. Quick pick at Old Faithful or a quick uh, look, I should say, at a bold fable. Looks like it's going off. And the camera keeps stopping and going. All right, the borehole for Norris Junction, the tilt meter, shows us if the ground's going up and going down. And, yeah, the monitor was not working for a few days. Yeah, top is north, bottom is east. This shows the last seven days of activity. Um, look at this sudden trend that suddenly decided to uh, take a jog east. Um, now remember, they're measuring what it's doing under the ground. And the magma is spreading out, going out horizontally. Um, it was moving in an easterly direction. It's kind of hard to tell here. 
what the heck is it doing now and then the last 30 days yeah, you can see yeah the monitors are not working and then they told them they need to do better um watching put in more boreholes to uh, see what's going on with yellowstone yeah all of a sudden it was what way over here off the discs and now it's um yeah doing a dramatic move here we have the monitor for the Madison River area, borehole 207. Again, data missing. Top is north, bottom is east. Look what it did on the 8th. I noticed this. And look at that. Okay, the last 30 days. There around the 8th. It took a jump and then it dropped. the borehole for Yellowstone Lake top measures north bottom measures east the last seven days yeah what's it doing yeah that magma is definitely on the move um, yeah definitely flowing in a direction that it didn't move before and then the last 30 days Grant which is on the uh, western side of Yellowstone Lake I'll show you so here we got Yellowstone Lake. This is the fishing bridge. Um, this is West Thumb. And over here is where they have the monitor for Grant Village, right there. So the activity, remember, lots of dots means lots of shaking. Look at all those dots. Last seven days. Yep. And then the last 30 days, again, data missing. Look at that. Now, I've talked about Grant a lot. And then look at this. It changed direction too. It's going east. What do we have east? Well, let's pull it out. Do, 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 do. Okay. Kind of a northeast. Yeah, the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome where Bob Smith says he believes that the next eruption will happen up over here. Down below this video in the more information box, I will give you documentation and links to everything that I say. This is a document by the National Park Service .gov called Windows into Yellowstone by Dr. Robert Bob Smith. Here he's talking about the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome where um, the magma is the shallowest under that location. Question was, does the shallowness of the magma necessarily relate to where the next eruption might be? And Robert Smith says, oh, I think it would. You got two main, po main pods in the middle, the southeast and northeast beneath the domes. If I be laying beds, I think it probably wants to come up in the northeast. Is Bob Smith a Benton man? All right, going back to the Norris Junction borehole tilt meter. Top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. Yeah, it's doing a little twisty isn't it towards the east last 30 days and then before I go I want to go back into the trinium concentrations here on usgs.gov it says Yellowstone hotspot has long been suspected to be part of a mantle plume a region of the mantle that is hot but still solid well then it says that is buoyantly upwelling Mantle plumes may originate from the boundary between the Earth's mantle and the core, nearly 1,850 miles beneath the surface. And the camera stopped working once again. Well, anyways, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, um, is Bob Smith a bitten man? So he believes there'll be another eruption. Don't know when. He even admits that uh, volcanism is relatively new. Um, they haven't even had permanent monitors there very long. But um, they are hoping it will be a small eruption. Could be anything from the size of Mount St. Helens to uh, a full-fledged caldera forming eruption. Um, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.